Hey guys, and welcome back to the series where we talk nothing but fancy Premier League. If you enjoy the video, don't forget to support me by hitting that like button. Let's see if we can get 50 likes before the game week deadline. And if you're new around here, get subscribed and stick with me for weekly videos throughout the season. If you caught last week's episode, you know that game week 9 saw my team pick up a disappointing season low of 31 points. My players simply weren't up to it last week, but as the manager of the Bretsby Babes, ultimately I take full responsibility for the performance. Despite my players not being completely at fault, something had to give, and I was bored of playing the orthodox FPL way and just using one free transfer per week. So for game week 10, I decided to make some drastic changes and ended up spending minus eight points in the process. The question was who in my side was indispensable and who needed to make way for fresh blood. Theo Walcott became an injury doubt shortly before the deadline and after my team had such a poor week in game week nine, I didn't wanna take any chances on that. So he was the first to be transferred out and was generally an easy decision for me. Sergio Aguero has been such a letdown in recent weeks, costing a huge 13 million. He simply wasn't living up to that price tag with point tallies of two, minus one and one in his last three games. Thoughts of how my team could look without him was certainly clouding my judgment. And the same could be said for his Man City counterpart, John Stones, who had nine opportunities to keep a clean sheet for me and has failed on every single occasion. With all this considered, I'm proud to say that in the end, I stuck with my gut feeling. I mean, as the saying goes, your gut is very rarely wrong. And my gut told me that you can't keep waiting for these players to come good. Statistically, there's no chance of a John Stones clean sheet away to West Brom. And on current form, surely Aguero is not going to bring home too many. Ah, oh, for f Ah, uh, yeah, that's right. I transferred out Stones and Aguero last week, spending eight points in the process, and collectively, they've picked up a whopping 23 points between them. Please let me know in the comments below that I'm not the only idiot to have done this. My team still managed a total of 67, so ultimately, it's not a dreadful week, but with the average being the second highest of the season, and thoughts of what could have been if I hadn't have made these transfers, I'm still having nightmares over Man City's return to form especially with their next fixture now being at home to Middlesbrough and me being left without any Man City cover. If I'd have just left things as they were, I'd be pushing the 90 point mark this week. And to make things worse, my new signings were absolutely dreadful in game week 10, with Koscielny, Callum Wilson and Mane all failing to impress. In my last episode, I clearly stated that Coutinho seemed the more consistent FPL option for Liverpool, but I've not listened to my own advice and I've had an absolute mare tripling up on Liverpool and bringing in Sadio Mane instead. At the time I made the transfer, I just felt he was the more explosive option with regards to goal scoring, but it certainly hasn't paid off this week. For game week 11, I've now got the headache of whether I put all this behind me, bite the bullet and just bring Aguero back into the fold. But I've spent that money I brought in for him elsewhere now, so it's not that simple. I think it may just be one of those situations where regretfully, I have to stick with my decision. The prospect of not owning an inform Aguero is something I didn't really want to face this season. But to end on a positive note, there's no getting away from the fact that without Aguero, you can still build a very formidable FPL team when using that money wisely. Make sure to check back with my channel next week and be the first to know of what awful decisions I end up making for game week 11. This week, my players to watch consists of a lot more names you'd expect to see with regards to FPL, with a lot of the big hitters performing well this weekend. In other weeks, it's been the lower budget differentials that have taken the plaudits, but for game week 10, a lot of players with their big price tags have lived up to the expectation, with Chelsea, Liverpool, Arsenal and Man City all being equally impressive in their respective fixtures. There is one very cheap differential emerging this week though, and that's Man City's Ilkay Gundogan. Granted, he's not going to bag a brace every game week, but he's taken his total to three goals in six games now, which, considering his measly 5.5 million price tag, is a sensational ratio. As a midfielder playing for Man City, who isn't exactly defensive minded, you'd think his price would be more around the 7 million mark, but he's available for 5.5 million, which is seeming like a complete bargain at the moment. Now fully fit, he seems a very important part of Guardiola's side, and you just can't argue with that price tag. Gundogan's teammate, Aguero, is surely a banker now for the upcoming game week. Really, he's a player to watch every week, but his form hasn't really shown that recently. However, he burst back onto the scene last weekend with two goals and an assist, and now faces Middlesbrough at home. So I'm sure he'll remain a very popular choice and will likely top the captain charts this game week. My defensive option, Cesar Aspilicueta, has helped Chelsea to four consecutive clean sheets now. 
with two of those being on the road. You can take your pick of the Chelsea defenders, who of course are all picking up those clean sheet points, but Aspilicueta is the player that is also bringing home some bonus points too, and is generally very consistent, so he gets the nod. This impressive performance from Chelsea also saw attacking options Hazard and Costa continue their exceptionally good run. I'll certainly be considering both of these players very seriously before that deadline hits. Eden Hazard's prices rose now to 9.9 .9 million the other night, and this will surely go up to 10 million before the start of the game week. As for Costa, he doesn't come cheap either, but week after week he just continues to deliver, and despite his high price, offers a nice alternative for those without Aguero. Chelsea's fixtures still remain tricky for a few weeks, but on current form, that might not be significant. And it's important to note that directly after this difficult run, their fixtures throughout a busy December look very nice indeed. Another big hitter, Alexis Sanchez, also returned to form in impressive fashion, with a predictable two goals against strugglers Sunderland. With his conversion to a striker for Arsene Wenger's side, I'd have to put Alexis in the category of must-haves at the moment, with him being such a focal point for that Arsenal team. It'll certainly be a big test for him against an organised Tottenham side next, but he's the kind of player you just always feel safe having in your team. To round off the big performances this weekend, Liverpool kept up their fine attacking prowess, putting four goals past Crystal Palace. There were a few unlikely names on the score sheet on this occasion, but Firmino got himself in on that action, and Coutinho pulled the strings once again. I really feel like I'm repeating myself week after week, but it's hard not to when Liverpool keep putting on performances like this. It's just simply impossible to know who will stand out each week, and it's basically a coin flip. So at this point, I wouldn't criticise anyone for doubling up on that Liverpool midfield. But even then, you still might not get the right player. I realise I've included a lot more obvious, expensive options this week, but simply put, they're the ones that stood out. If I had to opt for a cheaper alternative, I'd advise taking a punt on Callum Wilson this week. He failed to contribute in Bournemouth's last game against Middlesbrough, but now faces a home tie against Sunderland in his next game, so I think there's a high probability of him getting back in the points this game week. Okay guys, that's all for game week 11. Really hope you enjoyed the video and it gave you a few laughs as well as being informative. Make sure to get subscribed and I'll see you in a few days for the next instalment of my other series, the FPL Point Predictor.